started. Mrs. Camphouse, are you good? I'm ready. Okay, thank you. Welcome to our December committee meeting, the Norwood City Schools Board of Education. The Norwood City School District Board of Education follows a bi-monthly meeting schedule. The first meeting of the month is called our committee meeting. At this meeting, we fully discuss our agenda for the board meeting to be held the third Thursday of each month. As board members, we encourage you to attend, watch, and listen to our committee discussion, um, resulting in action at the board meetings. For full disclosure, our committee meetings are always announced, video and audio taped, as well as posted to our webpage for your view. All of our meetings are public and visitors are welcome. Mrs. Camphouse, will you please call the roll? Mrs. Orza? Present. Mr. Atwood? Present. Ms. Ballard? Present. Mrs. Cole? Present. Mrs. Raper? Present. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Wait for Brandon to get back to Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Item 1.04 is the adoption of this evening's agenda. Could I get a motion, please? I'll motion. I'll second. Mrs. Orza? Yes. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Ms. Ballard? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Mrs. Raber? Yes. Item 1.05 um, is the approval of minutes from the regular meeting on November 21st. Motion to approve. I'll second. Mrs. Orza? Yes. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Ms. Ballard? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Mrs. Raber? Yes. 1.06 are the minutes from the committee meeting on December 10th. Can I get a motion, please? I'll approve. motion to approve. I'll second. Mrs. Orza? Yes. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Ms. Ballard? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Mrs. Ray? Yes. That brings us to item two, which this evening is the hearing of the public. Um, we'll open up this evening for public comment. Public participation at board meetings is to further improve the communication between the community and the board. Time shall be allotted at each regular or special meeting to hear public and or representatives of school related organizations. Public participation at committee meetings is limited to those invited to speak on specific issues. Each person addressing the board should fill out a form listing name, address, and agenda or non-agenda item and hand the form to the board president. Each speaker will have five minutes to address the board. So those of you who have filled out forms this evening, um, your five minutes will be given by um, the sound of a timer. Then at that time, we do ask you to, to um, wrap up and finish your presentation. No more than 15 minutes will be devoted to any one topic unless a majority of the board votes to continue the discussion. Speakers may offer such objective criticism of school operations as concerns them. However, the board will not hear personal complaints of school personnel or complaints against any person connected with the district. Concerns and comments about individuals should be brought to the attention of the administration. So again, here I'll just offer a little bit of advice to those of you who are speaking. Um, please just don't refer to anyone by name. You may refer to them by title um, so that we can get through this appropriately. And that brings us to our first uh, speaker, which is Pastor Sonny James. Welcome. Take your time. <laughs> You're right up here. Do you need? Sorry. Pastor James will be speaking on um, the community this evening. Well, greetings, everyone. Greeting to the board, all of those that uh, serve our great community. 
It gives me great pleasure here at uh, the end of 2019 to uh, first virtually be able to be standing before my peers. I feel blessed and honored to uh, be able to do so. Uh, in fact, I've got a nice ornament. I think this will be my favorite ornament on the tree this year. I uh, just wanted to uh, come tonight and to celebrate um, people that have uh, committed themselves to serve our community and to serve the residents and the families that we all serve. And I wanted to come and commend you all um, because it's admirable when someone gives up any part of their world in their life to serve other people. And so you don't have to be the pastor of any church or in any community to serve. And so I uh, take my hat off to all of you. Uh, one topic in particular, Sharpsburg has been going through a, a trying time with construction and all, but I just want to assure the residents of Norwood and, and the board that I couldn't be more pleased with how we address the complicated issues from parking to parents <laughs> to the students and that whole process. And it really just goes to show that uh, everything starts with leadership. It starts and ends right at the top. And so uh, me being a pastor, obviously, according to the word of God, we need to give honor to whom honor is due. And it doesn't mean that we're always going to you know, smile and hug each other or invite each other to each other's home for dinner. I might just show up because I'm hungry, but the, the thing is, what makes us so great in Norwood is that we're resilient and that we can continue to have difficult issues, but we can continue to work together. Uh, from when my sons were um, in middle school, and I was challenged by an administrator and she told me one day, she says, Pastor James, just go sit down. You're a bear. Send your wife in here. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it just goes to show that if we give each other an opportunity just to love each other and to work together, that we can address difficult issues and we can find good in everybody. So I just wanted to stop by today. I'm glad I was able to even walk in and just encourage you and encourage those that are setting their hearts to come and fill some of these seats to uh, just come with love, come with open hearts, and open mind, that uh, we don't all have to think the same or act the same, but we can come to a common agenda and reach a goal that satisfies the children we serve in this community and those families. So God bless all of you. Happy New Year. And uh, prayerfully, uh, we'll have a lot of fun in 2020. God bless you all. Thank you. speaker this evening is Mr. Josh Metters, and Josh would like to speak on the subject of the football varsity head coach, Mr. Metters. And again, I'll just offer a gentle reminder just to refrain from using specific names and just titles only. Thank you. <laughs> Changes things because I have. Okay. 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 Uh, my name is Josh Metters. I'm a 22 year Norwood resident, a Norwood alum, youth coach, and future Indian parent. I'm speaking in regards to the varsity uh, football head coach position. I've played football here. I've coached uh, middle school. Uh, and I've been a youth coach since 2013. I've been around during times where, regardless of record, kids were excited about football. While coaching the youth and what we call a feeder program, uh, I had the opportunity uh, to see a certain uh, coach who coached uh, for Norwood during that time, a uh, coach that kids love to be around, who was greatly respected and would do anything and, and would do anything for it. 
I believe that while he was a coach here, the impact he made on players was felt by the entire community, a community that he loves and truly cares about. I think the days of excitement are gone. The high school sidelines appear empty, and it appears to have trickled down to the lower age groups. It seems as though the heirs have been let out of the sales in not only athletic participation, but enrollment in general. As a parent, coach, and community member, I say it's time to bring excitement back. I strongly, uh, that we need uh, someone who can vouch for Norwood's character, who can sell Norwood's culture to those thinking of taking advantage of that choice and sending uh, their kids elsewhere. A Norwood guy, if you will. Someone who's been on both sides of the fence having coached both public and private schools. We've sat long enough and watched coaches come through, making Norwood a career stepping stone. We need someone who will spend their time willingly giving back not only to football and the schools, but to the community. I'm eager to see the future of Norwood football. My son will stay with the program, and hopefully the large number of great young athletes I've had the opportunity to coach will as well. Help us bring back tradition. Help us bring back excitement. Help us bring back Norwood football. Thank you. Our next speaker is Jacob Tanner. Jake would like to speak to us tonight about football. And Jake, I'll give you the same reminder. Just try not to use any specific names, OK? Thank you. Good evening. My name is Jacob Tanner, and I go to school here at Norwood High School. And I also play football for a varsity team. And I have been chosen to speak on behalf of a group of guys on the Norwood football team. We all know last year was not our best year, but we continue to play our hearts out for whomever our coach will be. It is our understanding that a recommendation has been a recommendation has been presented to the board for a candidate. Although this candidate is an amazing gym teacher and we appreciate the work he has done for our captain's castle, we feel that a better candidate was overlooked. This candidate has represented Norwood since the time he played as an Indian. He and his family have supported us boys constantly. He has been passed over this position previously and has continued to make himself a part of our heads up mentally. Our next speaker now has quotes from our teammates and other people who are on our page. Thank you, Jim. Um, our last speaker for the evening is Ryan Peter. And Ryan would also like to talk to us tonight about football. Ryan, would you like the reminder also not to use any names? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> My name is Ryan Peter, and I'm another teammate of Jade's. And I have been asking around school to see what they think about the candidate that has been presented to our board. These are some of the quotes I've gotten from my teammates about who we would like to be our head coach. He is a motivator who is from Norwood, shows how much he wants it for our city, and makes us feel more comfortable. I feel like he knows how to control a team, and our team isn't the most respectful group of young men yet, but that can change if he is our coach. He will treat his players like his own. Another one was, I can already tell he wants the best for us, and he always will. He, he always tells me to do what is best for me, but I think him coaching me and being my leader is what's best for me. The other one said, I, I loved watching him coach for Norwood when I was little, and now I, looked up, I look up to him for that. <laughs> Our final quote was, he do whatever he needed for us to win. He's a great guy, knows the game, loves the kids, and he loves Norwood. Not many coaches would wake up at 5.30 a.m. to make us better and push us to be the best we could be. He has coached at many other high schools and has taken them to championships and to state games and OHSAA playoff games. That was our final speech.
speaker tonight. Thank you all for coming and taking the time to talk to us, especially our students. Your voice is important, and we appreciate you coming tonight. That moves us to item three, which is executive session. In accordance with ORC 121.22G1, the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of a public employee or official, or the investigation of charges or complaints against a public employee, official, licensee, or regulated individual. Can I get a motion to go into executive session, please? I would like to make a motion that we enter into executive session for the before mentioned statute. I'd like to second that motion. Mrs. Warza? Yes. Mr. Atwin? Yes. Ms. Ballard? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Ms. Raymer? Yes. I would also like to say thank you to not only those who were here tonight, but to those who emailed us. They were read, they were received. I just want to make sure those at home know that as well.
question. Uh, I think Julie, we need, do you need to a timestamp. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let me get my thing back on. All right. All right. We'd like to reconvene to open session. It is 8.02. And with that, we'll move on to the Education Committee report. Item 4.01 is the approval of field trips. And as discussed at our committee meeting, um, these are all show choir competitions through the months of February and March. Could I get a motion, please? A motion. A second. Mrs. Warza? Yes. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Ms. Ballard? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Mrs. Raybrook? Yes. <coughs> Item five is personnel with superintendent recommendations. Mrs. Rowe? Yes, we have a resignation of a Sharpsburg uh, student assistant due to moving out of town. Under employment, we have a supplemental contract for Kevin Lockwood, and I would like to thank him for the uh, directing the uh, music program the other night and doing stepping in and doing a fabulous job. We also have uh, approving Jen List for our Winter Spring Assistant AED. And um, at this time in the recommendations, in addition to some pupil activity contact, uh, contracts and a soccer tournament uh, payment, we are recommending um, our varsity head football coach, uh, Brian Pitzer, but I would like our AD uh, to come up and um, give the reasons why the committee uh, has moved that recommendation forward. So, Mr. Hines, would you please come forward? Well, point, point of order um, before Alex. Um, so, I think in our agenda, we're going to vote on 5.01 separately, and then 5.02 2 sep yeah, separated out um one through three and then get to number four separately before we get into the people activity contract all right okay. so i think let's just just kind of take our time and, and go through this okay mm -hmm. let's go ahead and get a, a motion um on the resignation all motion i'll second mrs orza yes mr allen <laughs> yes Ms. ballard yes mrs cole yes mrs raper yes and then 5.02, the items that we have separated are one, two, and three supplemental contracts, OHSAA soccer tournament, and um, athletics for winter spring assistant AD. So let's get a motion on those. I'd like to make a motion to approve those items. I'll second. Mrs. Orza? Yes. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Ms. Ballard? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Mrs. Raper? Yes. Okay, and then that brings us to the athletics discussion for the varsity head football coach, and we would like to welcome our athletic director, Alex Hines. Thank you. Coach Brian Pitzer's energy, passion for our student athletes is evident every single day. His experience as an offensive coordinator, his vision for what the program can be, and the culture that he brings to the entire football family will set us apart. He will bring it back to the prominence it has had and it can have. The relationships he's built already with our students as the physical education teacher and with all other student athletes going forward will no doubt bring sustained success to the Norwood Indians football program. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hines. So if we could get a motion, please. I will make a motion to um, approve the head football coach. I will second. And before we vote, if we could just open to discussion. Um, I do personally want to say before we vote that um, I do have concerns over the panel and how it was put together. And so um, that will influence my vote this evening. Um, I would like to echo what Mrs. Orza has said. Um, while I don't necessarily you know, disagree with the choice, um, I was not pleased with the way um, the panel was handled and that would influence my vote tonight. I really do want to thank everyone that did step up on that panel. Um, despite the way that you know we may disagree how it was created, those folks did put in a lot of time and effort and energy into it. And I, I do want to say thank you wholeheartedly for, for that input. Um, thank you for bringing that to us, the information this evening, so that we can understand your decision. Thank you. 
So I had an opportunity to speak with Brian um, this week, Monday, for about 90 minutes. And it was a really good conversation that I had with him. Um, one of the things um, that I want to highlight here is that Norwood has a history of hiring first-time football coaches, head coaches, and have and those coaches have had a track record in the past of turning around football programs. Um, Jim Barry is one. Chris Majors is another one. If you look at some of their what what they stepped into when they took those jobs, and then the first couple of years of changing a culture, and then go from 0 and 10 and 2 and 8 to you know, nine and two, you know, 10 and one. And, and so I think I see the same things here. I see some common traits from what I've seen in the past, um, having played for Jim Barry and having been involved in the program with, with some of the other coaches. And, and so um, with that, my recommendation is going to be to approve. And I'm going to make another recommendation whether um, Mr. Pitzer realizes it or not, whether he's a resident of the city or not, he is now a member of the Norwood community. And so um, we're gonna be giving him an opportunity to lead a football program here in the future. And then he's also going to be accepting a massive burden that's gonna be set with high expectations. And so I just hope that Mr. Pitzer is ready for the challenge. Okay, anyone else? I was gonna say, I guess I'm the only one that haven't, hasn't spoken up, but so I'll, I'll come up with something, but um, no, I, I do agree that, um, I, I don't necessarily agree with the committee that was formed. I think that um, different representation could have been made. Um, however, I, I do feel confident that in Alex's decision in the sense that that committee um, simply made a recommendation. It was not a decision of the committee. Um, it was a recommendation uh, to Mr. Hines, who then makes a recommendation to Mrs. Ronan, who then makes a recommendation to us. Um, so that's how I'll be base basing my vote this evening. Mrs. Warza? No. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Ms. Ballard? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Mrs. Raber? No. Motion passes. Section 5. Section 5 is still Mrs. Ronan. Okay, I believe under Section 5 we have uh, several pupil activity contacts, uh, contracts, o, um, HSAA soccer tournament payments, and um, an elementary staff site person for the Avenues for Success program. Motion to approve. Make a motion to approve. I'll second. Mrs. Orza? Yes. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Ms. Ballard? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Mrs. Raper? Yes. Item six is the policy committee report with Mr. Atwood. Thank you, Madam President. Um, so uh, in light of the conversation that we just had surrounding um, this interview panel uh, with our head football coach, it is very apparent that we do need to listen to the community and we need to kind of look at ourselves and, and how we conduct our business. Um, so under, under the policy committee um, moving forward in January, we are going to be discussing um, putting some policy together for how these interview panels um, get conducted specifically for jobs where there are a high number of candidates applying for them. So, so that's one thing that's going to be moving forward in January. Um, as a part of our agenda, I am it is with honor and pleasure that uh, we move with 6.01, which are new policies uh, revisions of policies and regulations and so this is the second and final reading and adoption of the policies in the agenda uh, those um, include GBK IGBE DAB uh, IKE JEDA 
JFCG and JCG. Um, so all of these are cash balance, student transportation services, tobacco policy, remedial instruction. We did the first reading last month, so this is the second reading. Um, at no point has anybody, either from staff or the community, um, had any issues with any of the revisions of these policies. So I would like to make a motion to have the second reading and adoption of these policies into our manual. I'll second. Mrs. Orson? Yes. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Ms. Ballard? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Mrs. Raper? Yes. Item 7 is the Building and Grounds Committee Report with Mrs. Cole. Thank you, Madam President. We have one attachment. Um, this is from Norwood resident um, Kate, I guess it's Reverman, and she's asking to use the high school gym for a blood drive. Uh, so Hawksworth would be um, conducting the blood drive and she wants to honor her fiance's survival from getting struck by a drunk driver on October 2nd of 2017. She's requesting the high school gym on Saturday, February 15th of 2020 from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, she's ac ac requesting access to the uh, gym, restrooms, and garbage cans. Uh, this is a resident that lives on Elm across from the high, from the high school. And uh, you can see at the bottom there's a uh, note that says um, she would pay the cost of the custodian only. Second. And it just as a matter of discussion, thank this resident for doing this. I personally have had two life-saving blood transfusions, so it's very nice to see somebody um, wanting to give back in this way. And I, I appreciate it, and I'm sure she's very happy that someone did the same for her, um, her fiance. Mrs. Orza? Yes. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Ms. Ballard? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Mrs. Raper? Yes. Item 8 is the Finance Committee report with our Treasurer, Mrs. Camphouse. Thank you, Madam President. 8.01 and 8 to 8.04 are wrapped for your vote. Uh, 8.01 attached to our monthly financial reports for your review and approval tonight, as well as an enrollment report and a change order summary for Sharpsburg. 8.02 appropriation resolution, which is our budget for the fiscal year. 8.03 Duke Energy request for easement. This easement will give access to Duke to install and service the transformer as part of our renovation at Sharpsburg Elementary. This easement will be effective December 11th in order to not slow construction. 8.04, two nice donations that we are thankful for. One from the Masonic Temple of $500 worth of gift cards for needy families and another of a conference table from J.H. Rose Logistics worth $1,200. That is all I have. So I'd like to make a motion that we approved items 8.01 through 8.04. I'll second. So as a matter of discussion, I just want to highlight on here for the Sharpsburg change order listing we are still running under budget with the Sharpsburg construction project. Mm -hmm. Now we are, you know, we have people back into the primary building and we're now moving over into the elementary building and we're still running under budget. This is phenomenal. This is fantastic. Is. Mm -hmm. So good well job. Done. Thank it's you very, very much. Well done. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. <coughs> Mrs. Orza? Yes. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Ms. Ballard? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Mrs. Raper? Yes. Item 9, our reports, 9.01, our board announcements, if anyone has any. Actually, I, I do, if that would be okay, and it is a big thank you to our board president for all her many, many years of service to the families and children of Norwood, and we do have a token of our appreciation 
that we would like to give to you. So thank you. Thank you for all the years. Thank you. I'll just thank you. I'm not a crier, so that's, right. I would just say thank you. So I, I also want to thank you for the work that you've done on the board for the time that you've been here. Um, I think it's incredibly important work that you've done. And I hope that you take away from this um, a lot. And Val, I can say with all certainty, you are one of the best decisions that Brandon and I have ever had the pleasure of being a part of. Mm -hmm. And thank you for showing us what leadership means and what caring means, because you do it with all of your heart. Thank you. And I don't know who I'm going to call. <laughs> Because she is, uh, I'll have a lot more free time. <laughs> such, a, such a wealth of knowledge. And anytime I've had a question, she was a huge influence on me to decide to throw my name into the hat back in May. Um, so I will certainly, certainly miss your knowledge and your leadership and your friendship in this capacity. Thank you. I agree. I mean, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for you. I wouldn't have you know, made this jump to get involved with my community um, if it were not for your encouragement. Um, I think that that's, you know, so substantial in my life. So, thanks. Thank you. Your leadership brought a fractured board together into one speaking board, and I can say very much that I appreciate that. It's been a great board with your leadership. Well, thank you all. <laughs> Can we move on? <laughs> <laughs> Item nine point zero two is superintendent's report. That was my report. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> nine point um, zero three is the Great Oaks report. Thanks, Mary. I got to follow that. Um, <laughs> nobody's going to care now. Uh, so this past week, our board approved bids for the Butler County Advantage Health and Wellness Clinic to be built in Scarlet Oaks, which will be a huge help for our staff and students there. Um, the space will be provided by Butler Wellness, so and we are providing the space, so it's a great partnership. Um, also, at the beginning of the month, I had the honor of, of attending the ACTE National Conference, which was held in Anaheim, California. Our own colleague, who was Assistant Dean Donna Akins, presented on how to make leadership connections at the regional and national levels. Uh, we got to see and try new technologies and review curriculums that will be helping to expand so many new and emerging fields, um, as well as creating new options to improve long-established career paths such as agriculture and computer sciences. So that was, that was an honor. It was a fantastic convention. So thank you. That's my report. 9.04 is the Avenues for Success report. Um, there has been a push to, to um, recruit some of our younger kids at the elementary level um, for this um, Squash Academy, which um, has like just tremendous opportunities, but nobody's really biting at it. Um, so I know that Mrs. Faust went around and spoke to some of the kids, and um, it is a great opportunity. There are scholarship opportunities. There's tutoring available, um, and it's kind of one of those low-profile low athletic um, opportunities. And so when, when you have something like that and, and you can get in and be good at it, um, there's, there are many more opportunities for you. So um, if you're interested in that, please reach out to uh, Laura Ferguson or Sheila Faust for more information. And then that brings us to our legislative report with Mrs. Raber. Thank you. Um, so um, on the legislative slide, obviously a big um, point of contention right now, particularly in our own district, um, there's been increasing opposition to um, the voucher eligibility list across the state from school board members, superintendents, treasurers, you know, parents, et cetera. Um, of note in the last, you know, couple years, the amount of schools on the eligibility list has gone from around 500 to over 1200 now um, most recently which is you know a very large jump um, more than one-third of the buildings in Ohio are on the eligibility list um, and about three-fourths of the districts in Ohio um, have at least one building on that list um, which is pretty substantial and it has obviously gone up tremendously in the last year or two um, so that being said, uh, a committee was created by House Bill uh, 166 to uh, kind of study the state report cards and see if they, you know, need to be overhauled. Um, 
the expectation was that they would have come out with a list of recommendations um, that was supposed to be by December 15th. On the 16th, their report was put out. They didn't really have any real recommendations. Um, they kind of rehashed some um, you know, concerns that other, um, other groups had given them. Um, but the expectation is that early next year that they will kind of do some more work on the report card. Um, they're expected to hold some hearings um, to kind of decide on that legislation to um, determine if there will be any modifications for report cards. Uh, the most, one of the, at least the most likely changes is that they will go from the A, B, C, D, F um, kind of grading scale to one that's more of a, you know, exceeds expectations, meets expectations, or did not meet expectations. Um, because that A to F scale seems to be not widely popular and is not, um, I think is only used in maybe 13 states um, in the United States. So. Yeah, but that's just... That's just taking a yellow room and painting it purple. So I will say... <laughs> and changing the system yet yes. again. So yet again. there have been many, many criticisms that this group has not done um, you know, a good job of what it set out to do. I did read a couple reports that um, they didn't have as many hearings as they had said they would and didn't hear from all of the groups that they had said they would, including like a parent group. Um, so there's definitely some contention there. Um, or didn't respond to board members who reached out to them, <laughs> mm -hmm. possibly. And I think there are definitely legislators who are unhappy um, with the way this has gone down, and hopefully they can continue to be vocal and help move that along. But that's definitely something that we will keep our eye on because it's very relevant to us. It is. And, and this is the thing that, that, that the board needs to jump on to fight. I mean, this is, this is the thing. This is what's important. It's important for the district. It's important. Our you know, kids. for the kids across the state, not just in our city. So, I mean, my encouragement to you would be, you know, Brandon has already, you know, started the ball rolling with talking with our state officials, but just continue to do that and push mm -hmm. forward on that. Um, it's worth noting even that the top performing district in the state of Ohio has a school on the Ed Choice list. Mm -hmm. yeah. Out definitely. of the 22 public school districts in the state of Ohio, 17 or on the Ed Choice list, or no, no, Hamilton County, yeah, not state of Ohio. So, it's pretty obvious the Ed Choice list is not exactly a true reflection of the efforts made across this state, especially for the no. the teachers and and students that we have here in Norwood. It is not an honest reflection at all. All right, item ten is uh, meeting notification. Ten point one is the approval of future meetings. There are several on January 6th. So that would be the Records Commission meeting, the tax budget hearing, the organizational meeting, and the committee meeting, as well as the regular board meeting. These will all follow each other uh, sequentially throughout the evening. So everything up to the committee meeting is on the 6th. The yes. regular board meeting is on the 16th. Mm -hmm. A motion to approve the dates as written. I'll second. Mrs. Orza? Yes. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Ms. Ballard? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Mrs. Raver? Yes. Item 11 is the appointment of the President Pro Tem Conducting Organizational Meeting. I would like to nominate Brandon Atwood for the President Pro Tem for the conducting of the organizational meeting in January. I'd like to second that nomination. motion. Oh. Can we get a second? Oh, I'll, second. I'll second it. That, I thought, I thought you were motioning. Sorry. Sorry, I thought we did. I'll second it. Mrs. Orza? Yes. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Mrs. Ballard? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Mrs. Raper? Yes. There are no items removed for separate consideration. And so adjourns this meeting. Our um, last we don't do vice here. What are your? Hmm? Do we do vice here or at January? No, no. This is no. only for President Pro Tem. Pro Tem. So yeah, this right. is. This just gets you through that organizational meeting so that you can. Then we can do it. And then nominate. nominate. Right. So that'll all happen on the sixth. Right. Got it. Yeah. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. Mrs. Warza. Yes. Mr. Atwood. Yes. Mrs. Ballard. Yes. Mrs. Cole. Yes. Mrs. Raper. Yes.